Hello, YouTube Sidekick here with a uh, remaster, uh, re uh, new version of a video that I released just prior to the release of the F4E. I was made aware after I made the video that the preview copy with which I had been provided uh, did have a bug in it in terms of the weapons delivery, specifically the weapons delivery and dive toss mode, which <laughs> unfortunately was the one thing that I had made the video about. So. It changes uh, the results of the video and the results of uh, a lot of the things that I had to say. I apologize for having gotten that wrong. Um, the video that follows uh, has a lot of components that were from the original video where I was able to uh, reuse stuff I did. But, but um, this video is now correct for the release version of the F4E. Dive Toss Mode is now working as advertised in the manual. And I am able to demonstrate that in this video. So let's... Uh, Let's start over, shall we? Take two. Hello, YouTube. Sidekick here in my brand new Heat Blur F4E, provided by none other than Heat Blur. So I would like to start this video by saying thanks very much to the team at Heat Blur for providing me a review copy, at least a, a few days in advance of the release. Um, let's just say some uh, mutual miscommunications uh, meant that their offer to provide one uh, didn't actually arrive until a couple of days ago. So. I haven't really had a lot of time to fly the aircraft, and so I'm not going to use this first video to do any kind of review or even really a first impressions video. I will tell you for sure, though, that um, this model is a classic heat blur model in that it features a great deal of attention to detail, uh, which is, of course, a great strength of heat blur. But aha, it also means that, you know, heat blur modules can be a little less than accessible the average uh, pilot. I mean, the documents that come with the modules are models of technical documentation, uh, but <laughs> practical how-to guides, not so much. So don't get me wrong, that is not a reason not to buy this aircraft. But it is a reason why some people may find it difficult to get their full money's worth out of the module, because, you know, the learning curve is nearly vertical. And for many, uh, though, it may even be a pretty short climb, because if they're like me and my experience with Hitler, they're going to spend a lot of time to learn a few things about the stuff they're really interested in, uh, and they're really going to be impressed by the level of simulation. But they may not feel inclined past that to learn all of the nuances um, of the model, because there are so many, and because of the effort that's required to master even one more of them. I mean, that's certainly been my experience on the Vega, and to some extent on the F-14. I mean, I learned, I really enjoyed learning the high fidelity simulation parts of those models of the stuff I wanted to simulate. But, you know, when I was confronted with the need to learn something new for a new mission or a task that, you know, that I didn't know how to do, I often just avoided diving in because, <laughs> frankly, I knew how deep the water was. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is the contribution I would like to make here to repay Heatler for taking the time to provide me with this review copy is... I want to make the contribution of trying to demystify how to get stuff done in the F4. Particularly, how to get stuff done that involves putting rounds on a target on the ground. Now, by the way, with all of the combinations and permutations of weapons and delivery methods that are available in the F4E, there is an almost uncountable number of ways of putting rounds on the ground on target. Hey, which is kind of the problem. There's just too many things to talk about. So instead of trying to do a survey of all of those options and getting lost in the welter of detail, I want to try in this video, this very first video, to try and accomplish the very most basic task with as few steps and complications and explanations as possible. So. Let's drop some iron bombs on a target using the most straightforward method of doing it accurately. And believe me, actually discovering which one of those that was wasn't actually as easy as it sounds. So today I'm not going to go into all of the arguments about why I'm going to do things the way I do it, um, or why I think you should do it that way. You know, that is an important thing to discuss, but I'm going to save that for the next video. For now, you're going to have to trust me that I spent what limited time I've had with this model, module almost exclusively trying to figure out the simplest and most reliable way 
that drop bombs on a target accurately. And by the way, anybody who's ever tried to do that in any aircraft with iron bombs that doesn't have a CCIP pipper will know that it's never simple. This is not an F4E problem, this is an iron bombing problem. So, in other words, I've spent the last few days literally flying around in circles on the test range so that I could get these few minutes of footage. So here's a summary of what we're going to do. We are going to go out and drop Mark 82 bombs using the dive toss method as written in the manual. In contrast to what I did in the last video, where I couldn't do it the way it was written in the manual because the preview version with which I had been provided didn't work. That bug was fixed and was in the process of being fixed while I was doing the video. Unfortunately, I didn't know that. So I said a lot of things that were not true in the last video, including that I hoped that somebody from Hitler could explain to me why it wasn't working, <laughs> which they have now done, uh, by providing me with a copy that does work. So let's go back out to the range like we were going to do, except let's do it right this time. I'm not going to give you my first, my full first impressions or any kind of review in this video. I am going to do that video, but I'm just not going to do it today because I think I owe Heepler the courtesy of trying to get something out pretty early given that they gave me access to the module and this is what I could get done in the time that I have available. So today, I'm just going to assume that you guys just want to get in that long-awaited cockpit and fly that long-awaited airplane and hit what you're aiming at. So here goes. Okay, the first thing we have to do, which is particular to the F4, is we have to use the new bombing computer, which is going to allow us to communicate with Jester so that he knows what data he needs to put in his computer in the back seat to make sure that the drop is accurate. For a dive toss or DT bombing mission, bombing task, the only piece of information that Jester needs is the drag coefficient of the bomb. Now, the drag coefficient of a Mark 82 bomb at really any kind of speed and any kind of dive angle is very close to one. It's like 1.01. Still, for completeness, we're going to go through the process of adding that um, to, the, to the computer in the back, adding it to Jester's computer. So we fill out the form. The important thing for us to do here, we don't have to get the dive angle, the dive speed exactly right, but we have to get it in the ballpark. So I'm going to do that because I know about what's going to happen. And then I'm going to hit the save and close. And then Jester is going to take that and put it in his bombing computer. And then that should make sure that we have an accurate drop. I'm doing that now. I'm just using my mouse. The sim is paused. I would say that most of the time you'd want to do this on the ground before you take off. It's a little bit distracting to try and do this in the air, but you know, your mileage may vary. So uh, again, I just need to make sure that I'm getting that uh, dive angle up to the point where the drag coefficient was 0.01 and we're good. Now we're going to have to go down here, zoom in and set up our weapons release controls. Now, on the weapons release panel, there's four dials that we need to worry about for the DT bombing, for the simplest bombing method. The, mo the delivery mode is the first uh, dial, and we actually have to set it to DT for dive toss. Beside it is the weapon selector dial. We need to set that to bombs. We go down from that, we see a dial which sets the ripple size. We're going to set that to two. And next to that is a dial that sets the ripple interval. We're going to leave that set at the minimum value of 0 0.05. And we are also going to select the center pylon, which is where our bombs are, and that will give us a green light. So there, all of those settings are complete. Now we will go up top and we will set the site to air to ground. Just do a final check of the weapons panel here before... Uh, throwing the master arm switch, getting a yellow arm light. Now we'll also take a look, notice when we look at the radar that it is now in air to ground mode and it is showing a range of 10. This is a good indication that Jester understands what we're doing. This was not true in the previous video, which meant that uh, I should have noticed that Jester wasn't paying attention, but I didn't. Okay, so we're about to start our first run here in the F4E on the iron bombing test range. For those of you who are uh, loyal viewers of the channel, you'll understand what I mean by that. Uh, this is a range that I use all the time for a lot of my videos. The important thing about it, there's two important things about it. One, it's a very repeatable um, environment, so I can drop bombs from several different kinds of aircraft and be able to compare them because I'm always doing things the same way, using the same pattern and the same targets. 
It's also uh, conveniently uh, instrumented with something called the Target Impact Tracking Script, which is provided to me by a user named Draken, that will record the actual, uh, not only the results of the bombs, how close they came to the target, but also a lot of our delivery parameters. This is really kind of essential when you are trying to improve your iron bombing, is to take a look at how consistent you are from run to run to run. So. Let's try a dive toss bombing run in the F4E, the way dive toss works. It's basically a continuously computed release point system. You're going to designate a target on the ground, and then you're going to fly through the release point, and the computer is going to decide when to release the bombs to hit the target you've designated. The only difference in the F4E from other aircraft you might have flown is that the designation is actually going to be a two-step process. You're going to press the Jester context key or context button. We'll talk about that in a minute. He will then acquire the target on the ground. You will then pickle the point that you want to hit, and then you will fly the aircraft uh, through the release point, and the bombs will go. So we've designated. There's the designation. We pickle and hold, and the bombs go. Okay, that uh, seems like it was a pretty good drop. Got a BDA. And it looked like they were fairly much in the center of the target. Let's just wait and see what the target impact tracking script has to say about our results. Okay, there are the results. Let's take a look. Uh, nine meters away from the target. That's very good. 2,700 feet. Could be a little bit higher. 36 degree dive angle. That's in the range of what we wanted. So that looks like a pretty good drop. Let me tell you, it's a lot better than the results I was getting trying to use this system in the pre-release version. So I'm glad to see that Heatler has actually uh, fixed this functionality and now it is performing. Not only is it functioning, it seems to be uh, working the way one would expect it to. So let's go around again and have another uh, try at the target. So this time let's pay a little bit more attention to the roll-in. Uh, rolling in with the F4E uh, is different than a lot of other aircraft. It's uh, all every aircraft is, is different. Uh, the F4E is is kind of typical of aircraft like the F14 and the F15 in that it's very heavy. It has a lot of momentum. When you pull up on the stick, uh, the cursor, the sight reticle, tends to lag behind the pull. So when you uh, put the flight, uh, the lift vector on the target and pull up, uh, you have to stop before the reticle gets there because it will keep going. So learning how to judge that is one of the things you're going to have to get used to when you fly the F4. So I'm, I'm pulling up. You see the reticle lags behind. Now I've stopped pulling, and it's keep catching up. Now the thing that you need to remember is that unlike the A4, the F4 rotates around the center of its reticle. Designate, pickle, and there go the bombs. Let's see how we did. So that makes the roll in a little bit different. A little bit more, um, the, the point you need to get used to if you're used to flying the A4 is you don't want to roll out below the target like you do in the A4 because in the A4, the the flight center line is at the top of the reticle, the 50 mil mark. In the F4, it's right in the middle of the reticle, so you really want that pretty close to the target when you roll out. Eat. Let's take a look at our results there. Okay, 10 meters and 15 meters from 3,300 feet. Those are pretty good results. So I, I would say I'm pretty pleased. Even after a couple of runs, we're getting uh, good consistent results. Let's go try dropping a bomb on something else. So the other uh, symbology that you want to be uh, aware of on the reticle in the F4E is that there are three dots on the outside of the reticle circle, known as the roll dots. Now, there are also three matching dots on the inside circle. You know your wings are level when those dots are matched up. But the dot on the outside uh, circle will point directly towards the top of the cockpit. So you want to use that as a cue to point that at the target and then roll the wings level and then let the pipper come up to the target. Now, after you pickle, the roll dots will give you a steering cue. You'll want to try and keep them lined up. So if they get out of alignment, you'll want to roll back into alignment. Now, this is an extra steering cue you don't have uh, in either the F-14 or the A-4. So it is very useful in trying to keep you online, which can be the most difficult part of this kind of uh, automated release. Okay, we're rolling in on the white hangar down there. Yeah, not quite as aggressive a pull-up. Stop a little earlier, try and keep the 
reticle from overshooting. Remember that the outside roll dot points to the top of the aircraft. Designate and pickle. And away the bombs go. Let's see how we did. Okay. So we were a little bit short, um, but not that far short because the center of the target is right in the middle of that building. It's not a very big building. So let's see what the target impact tracking script has to say about that drop. And once again, that looks like a pretty successful drop to me. It was a touch low and a touch short, but, you know, our rolling was not all that good and our pickle was not accurate. So uh, I'm not blaming that on the bombing computer. I'm blaming that on the pilot. So let's have one more go around. Let's see what we can do about taking out a truly hard target in DCS. Uh, and if anybody's ever tried to take out bunkers with uh, uh, dumb bombs, particularly with Mark 82s, you know, you got to get pretty close to them to have an impact. So... There is a bunker down there in the second small circle target. So we're going to use that as our target this time. Roll in and see if we can get close enough to it with two bombs using the F4E's dive toss bombing computer to uh, basically affect that target. It's kind of a, an acid test, honestly. So once again, we're just lining ourselves up here. Yeah, we're a little bit farther away, so we need to pull a little tighter to the target. Okay, we'll roll in from here. Uh, a little bit more of an aggressive uh, roll in. Remember to watch that middle roll dot. That's where the, we want the target to be. Want that to be pointing at the target like that. Rolled in a little early, but that's okay. Now we want that to point at the target. Get it over to the target so we can designate a pickle. We're a little bit to the left. We correct. Using the uh, steering cue, let's see how well we did. Well, that pickle didn't look like it was great, but the delivery did. So maybe the steering cue was of some help to us there. Pretty, uh, It's pretty uncommon to actually kill a bunker with two Mark 82. So I'm pretty happy with that result. Let's just see what it turns into numerically here with the target impact tracking script. Go. I'm just going to pause the video there. So we can kind of talk about things before I finish off. Okay, so that's my second try at doing an initial <laughs> video about the F4E. Uh, this was using the release version of the F4E, not the preview version. The preview version had a bug in the implementation of dive toss mode. Uh, the uh, good news is that the release version of the dive toss mode seems to be working very well. The results that I got on the range certainly correspond to what I consider to be uh, good results. You know, they weren't all that hard to achieve either. There is the extra step of having to press the context menu key for gesture. I have that mapped to a button on my HOTAS, which is conveniently close to the pickle button, so that I can just hit the designate key, and then as soon as you get the HUD symbology, you can pickle, and away you go. So it, it's not that much to get used to. It, it is There's only one issue, that when you do uh, hit the designate key, you get no feedback at all. Uh, until the fractions of a second later, you get the uh, designate cue. So it's a, it's a little bit dislocating to press the button and have nothing happen, especially when you're kind of busy in the middle of a dive bombing attack. But it does work, as you can see. So uh, hopefully you guys will be able to take this video that has the correct information and use it to get out to the range, drop some bombs, and hit some targets, which was always my intent to give you the capacity to do that. There will be more videos coming soon exploring all of the different options that the Heatler F4E gives us for dropping weapons, especially unguided ones. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry for the confusion over that the first gener video generated, but I'm glad that we got the bug sorted out. And this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.